Hey guys, my name is Faizy. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I wanted to talk about how I'm navigating these turbulent times in the market and what I've personally been doing to hopefully maximize this opportunity where we are seeing so much volatility and um, hopefully make the best of it. I want to also talk about how I've been personally holding up in these volatile situations and hopefully you are doing fine as well. I know it's not very good seeing a sea of red everywhere in your portfolio and seeing all of your stocks and everything go down by you know, 10, 20, 30%. And as a new investor, you might be pretty worried seeing all of this red everywhere. So I just wanted to make this video to kind of explain as to why these things happen and how we should be thinking moving forward. Now, just before we go into it, I just want to say that this video is not financial advice at all. We are speaking in a very, very general sense only. I'm by no means a professional. I just have a passion for investing, same as you. I've only been doing it for about three and a bit years now. So hopefully we can all learn from each other. Now, before we go into it, I just want to stress the fact that the market does not go up in a straight line. It goes up in down in cycles. So if you look at some stocks that have done quite well in the past, like Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, if you just zoom out, you're going to see that they have been going up over the long term. However, if you zoom into those graphs and look at a like a seven day price or like a daily price, you're going to see that there is quite a lot of volatility. However, if you zoom out, it's going to be a nice and upward trend. And similarly, if we compare this to, let's say, an index like the ASX 200 or the S&P 500 or even the Nasdaq, you're going to see the exact same trend. The market goes up and down. However, over the long run, we should see a trend upwards. So my question to you is that when we have this information, when we can see that in the past, the market has been pretty volatile and there's been so much turbulent things happening in the past, why are you and me panicking? There is no need to panic. In fact, we need to actually think about everything and go about it from a very rational and logical perspective. And we need to reassert control and think long term. If I was to look back on my three years of investing history, such a very short history, the biggest mistake that I would say was that I was not thinking long term. I was only thinking about the short term profit, making a few hundred dollars here and there, but not thinking about the long term prospects of a company where I could have made a few hundred K instead of just making a few hundred dollars. So thinking long term is a huge tip that I would recommend to basically anyone because chances are if you're investing, the money that you've put in is money that you don't need in the short term. Therefore, it's better to actually leave it there for the time being and let your investments ride out the turbulent times. Now guys, if you also want to know how I got started with investing, the mistakes that I've made and the lessons that have come from that, there should be a pop up on your screen right now and there should be links in the description for you to check out because that video has quite a lot of gems and lessons that I've learned and things which I wish I knew when I first started. Now, if you guys want to know the specifics of what's happened, why the market has been in a bit of a downturn and why the tech stocks are specifically falling, there's been so many other great YouTubers who've done videos on this exact topic. Therefore, I'm going to leave those videos in the description and I'm not going to try to explain it myself. The reason being is because those guys are much more better than I am. They are much better well-spoken and they can explain these concepts to you in a very, very easy way. So I would recommend checking those videos out because it's important to know why this is happening so we can increase our understanding of how the markets and how the world generally works. Okay, now let's talk about the stuff that I've bought so far in terms of stocks and ETFs. A bit of backstory before I get into it. My portfolio at the moment is about 65 to 70% in ETFs and the rest is in stocks. And the reason why I have this setup is because I don't expect myself to be the best stock picker in the world, not by a long shot. Therefore, this portfolio exactly reflects that by having a bigger allocation in ETFs. And the companies that I have in stocks are the stocks which I believe that could do well over the long term. So this way, if my stock picks tend to be wrong and I'm wrong in my thesis and my analysis and my research, which may be the case, at least I won't lose all of my portfolio. And it's a very calculated risk. Now, looking into some ETFs, ETFs that I've bought so far. This ETF is ASX IVV and this tracks the S&P 500 index over in America and you can see that there was a bit of a downturn around about here where it fell around four and a half percent which I thought was a pretty good buying opportunity so I was able to buy into it. Similarly with an ETF called NDQ this tracks the Nasdaq 100 over in America as well so you guys can see that it fell by about nine and a half percent which presented quite a good buying opportunity. Now another great ETF that I was able to pick up was ASX Asia. This tracks the top 50 companies over in Asia which are tech companies not including Japan so looking at it over here you can see that there was a sharp decline as well 
around that time, which is about 17.5%, which puts this ETF at a significant discount. And since this is also majorly geared towards tech, it fell quite a lot as well. So I was able to pick up a few units around the $12 mark and I was able to buy it as the price was falling. So generally speaking, I'm pretty happy with this purchase. And the other company that I was thankfully able to buy was Tesla. I've been looking at this company for quite a while when it was trading for around high 800s, as you guys can see over here. But as it was falling, I was able to pick up around two shares at the $661 mark so not as good however I did pick up three more shares around the 563 mark which I'm quite happy about because looking at the stock price now it's at about $680 so I'm pretty happy with this purchase overall now if the stock price was to fall even more down to its high 400s or even mid 400s um, honestly speaking that would hurt me quite a bit however i do have the cash available and i should be able to buy more into the company because i do believe in tesla's long-term prospects now a very important point that i want to stress is that i was able to do this because i had the cash available which is one of the things that i'm keeping at the moment because a lot of stocks right now may be trading at a discount so they may present a good buying opportunity that's why i've got some money available just in case and lastly the other ETF I was able to buy was A200 and looking at the graph it hasn't done too bad recently so that's just a routine purchase and Afterpay also fell about $60 from its highs to sub 100 levels which is just crazy i was considering to buy into it but i didn't but i'm going to keep watching it for now so currently looking at my portfolio my strategy is to create long-term wealth either through etfs and buying undervalued stocks and right now i would say over 90 percent of my investments are for the long term because i want to be able to sustainably increase my wealth while learning and researching at the same time as well Personally, this works for me, but it might not work for you. So always make sure to do your own research. A very crucial thing to highlight is that in these turbulent times, we need to just keep calm and carry on and we need to stay the course. I've said this multiple times, but it's very, very important. Back in 2018, there was a similar dip back in October where everything started to sell off and the media was putting out so much clickbait content and there was so much worry everywhere, which of course added onto the frenzy. But if you look at it now, nobody actually remembers what happened. And as you guys can see, this is the NDQ ETF. And back in September, we had a similar crash where this ETF went down 10.5%. And back then there was so much doubt just like now, but it's very important to understand that this is just normal routine stuff. Now at the moment, as I've said, I'm mostly buying ETFs, but I'm still doing research on other companies as well which I think could be good long-term investments. Now, one thing that I've noticed, which I think is pretty cool, is that the more your understanding goes up, the less fear you're gonna have. It's like a supply and demand graph, except if you just look at demand, they have a negative relationship. So once your understanding goes up, the fear goes down and vice versa. So it's just about learning more and not being worried because the markets do tend to trend upwards. However, it is going to be a bumpy ride, but the good thing is we're all going through this together so we can all encourage each other. Now, if you guys want to know more about my investing journey, this video goes into the details as to how I got started and what mistakes I made. And this video talks about the 10 most valuable lessons that I learned while trying to invest with the most valuable lesson being think long term. If I just followed this simple principle, I would have been able to multiply my wealth by many, many times. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.